Hello again, Leon Turner here once again to talk to you about all things trend. Uh, this particular time I'm going to have a quick go through IQ Energy, the bolt-on uh, M&T monitoring and targeting package for IQ Vision. So this is installed separately but it's it's really just a couple of files and then a separate license but it runs inside IQ Vision. So everything you're going to see can be mixed into um, your normal graphics should you wish to and the various things we're going to look at can be put into dashboards and so on and mixed in with the day-to-day -day UI which is created for users to, to interact with their system. Now, unusually I've started where we'll end so here is a little dashboard a single page dashboard to start so there's a few graphs on here and we've got a little menu system down the side. So all very simple. Um, there are a few fake meters in here with some data. And if I just show you those quickly, they look a bit like this. So I'll give you all three meters, there we go. And you can see that goes back quite some time. So that's a year's worth there, or nearly a year. And I can even do last year, so you'll see. Now you notice the data has been sort of aggregated here to, to fit into a year long view. There are thousands and thousands of samples in there. So it would look very scruffy if it tried to do all of them to display all of the samples. Uh, though fake data has been created using analytics. There is another video which tells you how to do that. Um, I won't go into that here. So what we're going to do is go through and just create some very simple graphics uh, using um, IQ Energy inside IQ Vision. The very first step is to get the N IQ Energy palette installed. Now I've already got it on here. I've got it uh, set up. So I've installed the files already um, and I've opened the palette. So step one is actually to put the IQ Energy Manager service underneath your services. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the demo. So we've got an hour. I don't intend to use anything like that. If this is more than 10 minutes, I've failed. So now our demo is licensed. Uh, sorry, our demo is initiated. We should be able to do a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is add the heart of these things, and that is a meter aggregator. Meter aggregators are linked to meters. You can have a number. So we could have all three of our meters included into here and they can be added together, uh, multiplied, etc. So we can do quite a lot with the three meters we have, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a meter to each, I'm gonna have separate meters to each one. So we'll have three aggregators. So what I'm gonna do is go away and find my history file that I need to include in here. So I'm gonna choose the history and it's the one I showed you earlier, meter one and that is an instantaneous meter so a rate rather than a cumulative i'm going to leave everything else as is i'm not going to do anything particularly fancy with any of these things now i could add tariffs and so on and the tariff is added as a uh, a normal nu numeric schedule so you can put in your your tariffs there but i'm not going to do that i'm going to keep this pretty simple so that's meter aggregator. In fact, if I rename that and give it a sensible name, I'm going to do that for all three meters, and then we can use those as a further example. But obviously, I do not want the same information on each one. So fairly simply, meter two and meter three. Now we can already get some pretty good information out of these by using the calculate button. So these numbers are already calculated out for you. So you can see it's already quite useful. We've got current hour, last hour, current day, etc. So that's as much as I'm going to do on the aggregators for now. As I said, I'm going to keep this fairly simple. So that is step one completed. Step two, uh, we're going to create a very simple graphic. Might as well just call it step two. And you should immediately see 
how this starts to fall into place. So if I go to my UI widgets and we will go for a ranking chart very simply. It comes in in a sort of default of black. You can change that, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'll just change these two around. So here we go, boom, so white. Now click here to choose all. So this is where I'm going to link it and you have to link these to aggregators. That's one of the rules. They have to be linked to aggregators. Give it a name so it looks sensible. And I will add another one. And we'll add the third one. And yes, again, make these are the aggregators I'm now pointing out, not the history. So this has already got information crunched out. We'll go for the current period. Why not? We'll, we'll have a, a, to, um, a to this point and we'll go for the month. I'm already halfway through the month as I record this. So that should give us some sensible figures. There we go. So as quick as that, we've got a ranking chart for meter one, two, and three. It gives me an integrity score as to the data, which is pretty good, totally acceptable. And I can use this little widget to go through week, month, year, and five years to date. This will be and day to date. So this is how they're doing against each other to this point in time. No normalization applied as yet. I can pop up here and instantly get a little table and go back to the graph. So this little user interface is already uh, built for you. Uh, and if I'd set up a tariff, that little, the monetary value would have flipped it to being a calculated out, multiplied out monetary value. So that's a fairly simple example. It all sizes relatively easily. Now, if I duplicate that, I can show you how we can make this even more flexible. So again, I go to choose ord. Now this time I'm going to have meter one twice. And I'm going to delete meter three. And I'm going to have one showing me the current period, one showing me the last period. Now, if I take it out of engineering mode, you'll see, hopefully, so previous one meter, August 2024, September 2024. So now this is month stepping through the various months. So you can see how that works. And we're stepping through month by month, previous on previous, and we can do the same with the year. So it instantly calculates out. Now I've got previous 2023 and this year 2024. I'll go back another one, 2023, 2022, and so on, day on day. Now, I could have a lot of these traces on here. I'm going to keep it simple with this. So this would be quite useful for your overall energy usage. Now, something else we could do, there are, incidentally, there are lots of these kind of charts you can see here. You've got line charts, bar charts, stacked bar charts, regression charts, if you really want to get into that sort of thing, heat map charts, and so on and so forth. But something else you can do very quickly and easily is put the accumulators on the page themselves and work out or get out the numbers for last day, current day, etc. Now I'm just going to bring these on as text. So you can kind of see that's the, the binding. So if I take that binding, now it's come on as a field editor, which isn't the nicest thing in the world. So I'll just do this as a bound label and add a binding and then paste in my stolen ord and animate the text. Yeah, we'll just have all of it and make it easy to see. 
that should give us the number. So then it's easy enough to go away, duplicate that up, and I can then make, so that's last day, we've got current day. And you can hopefully see, it's fairly easy to then go away and build a table of all these values for your various meters, quite simply. So to build up a little tabular view is remarkably quick at this point. So we'll do meter two as well. Not going to bother with meter two, three and keep it nice and simple. There we go. Now, if you really want to get complicated about it, you can actually use these numbers in Wiresheet. So you can use a link mark to get these numbers out and use them in Wiresheet to create some, some more complicated outcomes, if you wish. Now, I've got a sort of pre-canned example here of a prediction. Uh, so this is using the same sort of numbers. Uh, so I've pulled in last year's total. I've pulled in the current year's total. I've multiplied it out and I've worked out what the difference would be come the end of the year. So at month one of any certain year, this is particularly, this is a bit of guesswork. By the time you get to month 11, this is actually quite accurate. And if I show you what that kind of looks like as a wire sheet, um, it's not the simplest thing in the world, but that's all it is really, a couple of modules on there to take last year's total, this year to date, what the current time is, which includes the date, put that through a bit of string calculations and then multiply it out to get quite a, a useful number. So again, it's a kind of rough prediction of energy use and it works fairly well. And what I'm finally gonna do is create a little menu system. Again, this is included in here. There's a, a menu part of this um, to try and make all this work together quite nicely. So if I go back to my, my graphic here, I'm going to slide these over to make myself some room for a, a menu system. Now I have got a graphic here on step four, the folder. So I've created a folder and it's purely just so I can create a graphic, a graphic which is a very narrow strip, a menu for my menu system. So that's going to be on every single page that I create. Uh, and what I will do is put my menu system in here. Now, the way you do this is under files, we create a folder called menu. And under that folder, we create a text file. Now that text file can be called almost anything except the extension has to be dot menu. And the behavior in IQ Energy is to interpret that as a menu file. You can see it's given it a, a fancy icon. So if I double click on it, we instantly get something called the menu builder. Now, this is pretty easy to use. So I can create many headings and child nodes and so on and so forth. Again, not gonna make this too complicated because it would be tedious, really. Um, now, obviously you would use something a little bit more sensible than these quite clearly. But you can see it's kind of previewing down the side here. Save that. What that actually looks like is a text file. So if I go to the text file editor, you can kind of see it's building this XML type frame. And if you're comfortable with XML, you can actually build that yourself manually. Uh, I'm not going to, but you could. So, and you can insert various things. You can change the graphics on these to give you certain oh, we'll try something a bit more sensible to give you a more interesting looking menu should probably use some different things we go and save that okay now what we can do then is go back to our narrow strip and you'll see these parts here, vertical pop out a menu builder. I'm gonna use the vertical menu because I want it running up the side of my page. Might have to shrink this down a bit so I can see what I'm doing and fit it in. And then all I need to do is point it to my file that I just created. 
under menu, text file menu. Uh, I could change the color if I wanted, to, in fact I will, because I want it to match the other thing. And icon defaults, we'll go with something neutralish. Okay. Now they're all down the bottom because I've got a separator in there, which I don't really want. Let's have it there. In fact, I'm not going to have it anyway. We'll keep it simple. We'll keep it at the top. There we go. So now if I go back to my navigation menu, which is here, you can see it kind of folds out, folds in. Now, the way to use this is to then go to my other graphic, the one I created with some space down the side, put it into engineering mode, and then I will have a PX page, which is step four. If I drag that in here as a PX include, there's my menu. Now I can adjust how this all looks quite simply at a later date. And the way we would engineer this, if we go back to PX page itself, I've probably got the sizes wrong. So menu text size, I want it much bigger than that. We'll go with 25. Uh, no, we won't. We'll go with 50. Okay. Perhaps not. I think I may have made the text too big. Let's try that again. Better, much better. Right, so once again, if I go back to my menu file, I can actually put in the ords I wanna jump to. So for example, step one, I'll copy the ord from here. That'll be my main heading. Step two, um, copy, put it in there. Step three, copy, stick it in, well, that one actually. And save it. So these are just the folders I want to navigate to and the, the graphics I want to, to use. Now again, if I go back to my graphic now, is that one? As I fold the menu up and down, you'll see it jumps me to the various pages I need to go to. Now I haven't actually put the menu in that one. Of course I would do. So it's jumping me around within IQ Vision itself at the minute. But of course, had I done it correctly, it would just jump me to the whatever graphics pages I want. Now, if I show you the example I started with, that's pretty much exactly the way this has been done. So I've got four panes put in here, four different UI widgets from the IQ Vision, IQ Energy, sorry, palette. And I've got various menu items which jump me off to particular graphics. As easy as that. And this is just a PX include which I've put on every one of these graphics. And that is a very, very brief overview as to how to get something working out of IQ Energy. Now for our partners, we have a demo station available on uh, PartnerNet, which is a combination of all these things. You can use that to your uh, to suit your ends. It can be um, edited, borrowed from, used as a template, whatever you wish. But the, the, the menu system is half configured and we've got some graphs in there to give you an example. So uh, once again, I hope that's helpful. Um, very brief, but hopefully enough to get people started. Um, so again, thank you for listening and I'll talk to you next time. Bye bye.